Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are going to be using the Sculpton S10 laser and uh, we are going to be using these little LED tea lights. Um, and so these are just battery operated little tea lights. They're uh, fairly inexpensive and they come in different little varieties. These, this is an orange and a white one and you can kind of see they flicker a little bit to emulate a flame. And uh, so this is a safe way to have a candle effect uh, without the risk of fire and burning. So, so we're gonna be making a small lantern and we'll be cutting that out of Baltic birch plywood. And so this is a nice little project that creates a nice little decoration um, that can be done for any season. So um, I'm gonna show you uh, how I set this up in SketchUp briefly. We're not gonna go into full details of that, but just some of the what I did. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and cut it out on this laser. And we're also going to be playing with using some tracing paper as a uh, kind of a diffuser in there so that uh, it kind of makes the light glow more. So if this is something that interests you, stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. All right, we're at the computer. I'm gonna show you really quickly. Uh, I'm just gonna breeze through my design work. I'm not gonna do a whole in-depth thing on how I do that. We'll maybe try that later if, if people are really interested. Um, and But I do wanna talk a little bit about some of the tools I use. So uh, anytime I'm designing from a, a real object, a real world object, so in this case, we're using our LED tea lights, I like to have a couple measuring devices. And one of them is a digital caliper such as this. Um, these do not need to be uh, super accurate. You don't need machinist quality on these. Um, as long as you're getting down to about a 30 second um, accuracy, uh, more than good for anything woodworking or anything we're gonna design on these lasers. A nice thing I like about these is that you turn them on and it is going to give you a digital readout of your measurement. And this one will allow you to scroll through um, millimeters, inches, and fractional inches. So for someone like me, born in the US, Grew up on Imperial units. Yes, I know we should move to metric. Uh, it's an uphill climb for some of us, but tools like these will help us. Secondly, I like having a tape measure. And uh, this one, as you can see, actually has both um, Imperial units, inches, and then also centimeters on the bottom. Again, it helps you kind of help making that correlation between inches and centimeters or millimeters. Um, this one I actually picked up from Ikea, super cheap. I know Milwaukee makes some similar ones. Uh, there's a lot of makers out there with, uh, tool makers out there with these. I'll leave a link to a couple down below if you're looking at them. So um, basically on this one, what I'm doing is I'm using the calipers and so I can get the diameter of our tea light candle. So right now we're looking at about 36 millimeters. And then if I wanted to switch it over into inches, you can see that it's about 1.4. Let's see if I can get that in the frame there without the glare. 1.4 or 1 in 2764. So um, those are just the quick measuring tools I want. Now for development software, I use a number of them, but if I'm using something where I need to really have interlocking parts, I started on SketchUp years ago. I've started trying to work my way into Fusion 360. Um, I, it's just hard to break old habits. So I'm just gonna show you briefly how I jump through it in SketchUp. Thing. All right, so here we're in SketchUp and I start by just simply drawing a ring that's gonna go around the tea light. And so this inner diameter is 36 millimeters plus a little bit, you don't want it super snug. Um, and then I have it about uh, an eighth inch in uh, thickness. So, and then I always bring everything into a three dimensional. That's just best how my brain works is being able to see it in three dimensional in this software. So once we have our starting ring, then I will work up from there. We're gonna place this on a base and here is kind of up to your, you know, you might have a space it needs to fit into, use those dimensions. Here I'm going, hey, I think, you know, that's where a tape measure might work out. Say, okay, I want it to be about three to four inches wide and or roughly uh, 102 millimeters. So um, that's where the tape measure can also help you out. And so I drew the base, uh, rounded out the corners, and then we of course need to jump into adding sides to it. And uh, so here you see, I've now added the sides. I've also again, brought it all into 3D. So this is all three millimeter or uh, about an eighth inch thick. Um, and then I also will then model in the finger joints, box joints, uh, mortise tenon, however you want to call that. Uh, so that they interlock and you'll see I have them on the bottom as well. So now we've got our ring on our platform We've got our four sides and we've got a top to tie it all together with an open area so that you can actually access that as well so um, Now this obviously wouldn't work very well without any glowing coming out the side So this is where we can start adding our vectors and so you'll see on this one I've gone ahead and added some Christmas vectors cut them all the way through 
so you can kind of get a very good uh, picture of how this is going to look at the end. Um, and um, on the inside of this one, we're also going to try adding some tissue paper uh, just to create more of a glow rather than the straight candle look. Now, of course, it might not be Christmas. Right now we're coming up on Halloween here. And so you can just swap out your vectors. So here you see I've created a jack lantern cutout. We've got a spider, cat and bat. Um, that would be great for Halloween. Or we've got our Christmas ones. Um, do any holiday celebration theme you want. Um, all you need to do is take the vectors from these, you would move it out of the way, and then you could bring your Halloween or others in, center them as best you want, and then cut that out. And one other thing I've done here, as you'll notice, is what I've done is taken the outlines of each piece, but I've also lined them up next to each other. Now, if I had these separate, say cutting out these two parts, it's going to have to cut this middle line twice. So it'll cut this part out and then it would cut this part out. Now, if you butt these two up against each other, it can make one cut for both sides and that can help you cut down your laser time. Um, and uh, you line up as many objects as have similar sides and similar faces as long as it doesn't um, affect your um, you know, there, there's a kerf there, it's going to cut some material away. And so if it's a real snug, tight fitting like an inlay, you're going to need to take that into account. Um, but with that, we have cut or we have made all of our um, outlines. We've got it ready to be cut out. And then over on the side here, I've created these for our tissue paper. These are just the inside frames of each of these so we can glue these to the inside. So we are going to take these files, we're gonna export them as a DXF, and that's what this program works for as far as vectors. And uh, we will then be able to import those into Lightburn and uh, we'll jump into the shop and see how these cut out. So let's go do that now. All right, next to add a little bit of glow to these things, I'm gonna use some uh, tracing paper in the laser. I'm gonna cut out just the inside squares out of this. And this kind of translucent material, uh, when glued into the backside, should allow that candle to kind of glow in each part instead of just being the bare uh, LED flame. So um, let's throw it in the laser, see how it cuts it out, and uh, we'll keep on going. Now the trick with this, it's gonna get cut out out of being blown around. So, lay it down in here. What I'll do is try to use a few magnets. Definitely in the right spots. Oh, the magnets did the trick. And the curse squares out. Okay, so we've got all the parts cut out and we have our paper pieces cut out. So now we're gonna look at assembly. So um, one other thing I will note that I went ahead and put these little 
holes into the middle parts. So now if you want, you can reuse these as little ornaments. So, you know, never, never miss an opportunity to maximize some of the things you're cutting out. So we'll just push those aside for now. And uh, our uh, adhesive of choice, I'm gonna be trying this Elmer's uh, glue stick. What we're going for is a nice flat, tight uh, glue down. Now, uh, I know this would work um, using some CA glue an accelerator right now all i have is this extra thick right now and so i'm a little concerned that that would um create a bit of a gap um but you could definitely use that and hit it with some accelerator but we're going to give it a shot uh using uh, just the glue stick on these and so the idea is that these squares should fit down tightly onto the back side get glued on and then as you look through it there'll be the glow on the uh, other side so uh, this is purple tinted, allows you to kind of see where you're putting it down. And then that's supposed to dry clear. So I'm hoping that's the case here. I did test it, it seemed to work out. And so we're gonna go ahead and kind of smear this around and then try to get this lined up on the side, top to bottom. on that line looks pretty good and then just you want it nice and flat so just try to burnish that in and as I say that glue should dry clear when it's all done let those dry quick and we'll come back and glue this all together. All right, so these did in fact dry clear. The papers held in really well. And so we're gonna go ahead and glue this together. So uh, first thing I do, the whole reason I put this circle on there is just as a guide to where to glue this ring in. And this ring is to just hold the tea light in place. So set these aside. All I do is I get both Items ready, a little bead of CA. And you could use wood glue, white glue. This just makes it kind of quick. Put a little accelerator on there. And then you want to be pretty accurate with this because that accelerator is going to kick. And just push it down, hold it in place. About five, 10 seconds, that should be, should be good. So we're gonna do the same process with all this. What I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna make sure we get these in the right spots. One quick dry fit again. So this one looks like it goes on that side. And then, oops, I'm gonna make sure we get these in the right order. This would go there. So where I have a joint like that, what I wanna do so I'll actually glue this one in first along the bottom, and then I'll come and glue this one in, because you want to kind of hold these at a right angle, make sure those are square and they don't get out of alignment. The, all the fingers and joints should help them line up, but you can get it a little bit off. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to put some glue along the bottom edge of this first one. And I'm not going to use any accelerator on here because I want a little bit of time with this. So I will set it in place. And then I will set this one back here. And I'll just hold it for a second. CA glue without accelerator should take, you know, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, maybe a little bit longer to start grabbing. You just want that to not get out of alignment. All right, so it's holding pretty well there. So now we're gonna put glue here and then along the bottom of this one, just clean up those sections we cut out. So we wanna glue along here to glue it to the side. Try not to get too much on, you can deal with a little squeeze out, but, and this is clear, so it won't show too much if you get extra, but just wanna get it in between each one of these again pull that out make sure you're 
papers towards the inside, push that down, line up the edge, and hold it in place. Here again, we're gonna hold it for about 20 seconds or so, let it grab. And then we're just gonna work our way around. We're gonna do this side as well. And then this last one, we can put glue, glue, and then the bottom. Okay, now we want to test fit this to make sure we got the right orientation. Looks like that's going to go that way. So we want to get glue all the way around the outside edges and pop that on. Push that all the way around and it's going to lock it in place. Just make sure it's firmly set all the way down. And say, take care of any of the glue squeeze out. Maybe not with your finger, maybe with a paper towel, but it's up to you. Now we let it cure really quickly and we'll throw a candle in. And there you have it. We have a couple of LED tea light lanterns and um, very simple thing to cut out on your laser. Uh, and uh, the nice glow of the tissue paper, I think helps set them off quite well. With these lanterns, you should be able to put any vector file in there. So it's not just limited to Halloween, Christmas. Uh, you could add uh, Easter, happy birthday, any, any design you want in there that you can cut out. And so I'm gonna leave the link to these lanterns in my Etsy shop. And uh, so if you're interested in cutting them out, I'll be available there. And uh, we uh, highlighted the scope from the S10 machine in this video. We're going to have a full review coming out shortly, um, going over all the features and my thoughts on this machine. And uh, if you're interested, this is the scope fun enclosure that we used in here as well. So uh, there, I'll leave the link to that video as well up here and in the description down below. So uh, definitely, definitely some good products that I'm using and recommend. So uh, go ahead and uh, if you're looking for them yourself, check out those videos for more information. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you found this video uh, informative and uh, educational, maybe a little bit entertaining. Uh, I do a lot of projects like this in my workshop. We've been doing a lot of laser content re uh, recently and uh, there'll be more to come. So if uh, this is something that uh, you're interested in, I uh, always appreciate that like button, leave a comment down. And uh, if I've earned it, um, hit that subscribe button as well. So uh, there'll also be affiliate links down below to some of the products I use in my shop. Um, they do go to help this support this channel and all that is appreciated. There's no extra cost for you and no pressure as always. We'll be doing more soon in the shop. So I hope you will be back for more. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I hope you get out into your workshop and are able to make something yourself. Have a good day.